Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I'm going to be talking about a movie called Lethal Weapon. Now, not that anybody hasn't heard of this movie. It's one of my favorite movies, a uh, buddy cop movie made in 1987. Directed by Richard Donner. Produced by John Silver and Richard Donner. Written by Shane Black. And Shane Black is one of the actors in Predator. And one of the idiots responsible for the new Predator remake. Or the, new, the newest Predator that came out a while ago. Fucking horror show. Worst fucking movie ever. Really got me pissed. And it stars Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, Gary Busey. Amongst others. Tom Atkins. What a movie movie that set a trend for me uh again i talk about movies and i do a lot of this for me and just like leaving stuff behind in a way not in depth stuff which i might do eventually just uh get into the nitty gritty of it but again this is a time i'm 16 17 years old and it's one of those movies where i had seen nothing no trailers no newspaper articles nothing Frank came up to me one day, he goes, did you see Lethal Weapon? I'm like, no. He goes, you gotta go see it. Went to go see it. And, you know, history is made in a sense. Great franchise. Um, I think it holds up better than Die Hard, although Die Hard is not a buddy cop movie in the same way. This movie is a staple of uh, Hollywood, I think. A uh, culmination of certain aspects coming together really well the direction the acting the story because you got a deeper story here where um danny glover's character is 50 years old it's his birthday he's getting ready to retire and uh mel gibson's character is suicidal it's several years after his wife died in a car accident which you find out in the second one wasn't, which is a great, uh, Die Hard and Lethal Weapon have great one and twos and threes, technically. So you got this clash. He, uh, Mel Gibson gets transferred. There's a history with Glover's character, Murtaugh, where he gets in, gets called by an old friend, and that'll be something that burns a little slower as they get thrown together in some crazy uh atmosphere because mel gibson's on edge you can see it he plays it amazingly well his transition from one division you know getting transferred is done awesomely he's got this uh reputation and murtaugh's questioning it and their chemistry is fucking incredible from the beginning to end and the whole series it's been amazing and we progress the story and Mel Gibson is, in this one particular point, he's like, okay, I gotta help this guy get down. The guy's contemplating suicide. He's on the top of a roof. And it's a great scene because Mel Gibson's like, hey, you know what, buddy? Come on, let's get out of here. This is uh, crazy. You know, times are tough. Let's go have a smoke and oh, I'll have a, uh, a drink or something like that. Let's go. Come on. And the guy's like, no, oh, man, I'm gonna really dig in. Murtaugh gives, um, Riggs gives him even more time, Mel Gibson's character. He said, like, right, I smoke a cigarette. He goes to smoke a cigarette and he handcuffs him. He goes, All right, come on, let's go. And the guy's like, No, man, I'm jumping. And there's this turn. Mel Gibson stares at him. He's like, You really wanna? All right, let's go. Let's, let's. And then he jumps off the roof with him. It is an intense scene that you, catches you out of nowhere. You're not expecting it. You know, 1987 buddy cop movie. As a fan of Starsky and Hutch, I was so in love with this movie. Then they get to the ground. Murtaugh. Danny Glover's character is livid. And he's like, what are you fucking doing? Get in here. And he puts him into this, like, diner. No one's in or whatever. And he's fucking let, he's ripping into Mel Gibson. You know, what are you doing? You're trying to get a pension. you trying to do the insanity thing. And it is brought to a fever pitch, a boil. And Mel Gibson gets his look in his eyes. Danny Glover goes, okay, go ahead. And gives him his gun. And he puts it to his chin. And he's like, you don't think I dig, dig of this? And... He goes and he pulls the fucking trigger. Maltrek has to put his web of his thumb, it looks like, to stop it. And he's like, you're serious. And you're like, where the fuck is this movie going to go? This is insane. 
what a fucking moment. I can remember this so vividly, going to see it more than once, which in the past was like, you know, you go to see a movie and you sneak into other movies, but this was big time. This was, um, you know, not in the sense where Jaws, I was so too young, Star Wars, I'm too young, I'm such a kid, it's all magic. This you're getting old, and you're like, holy shit, like, you understand these things, and man, you get, I get chills thinking of this scene, and it progresses again. And he's questioning things, and Murtaugh's like, I gotta get rid of his fucking partner. Leading into the subplot, the, the major plot that's gonna develop, and uh, the person who contacted Mel, uh, Danny Glover's character is the daughter is killed in an apparent suicide. They investigate, and she was poisoned. And they're like, okay, we talk to the pimp of the uh, witness to the suicide, and... Um, Mel Gibson saves Danny Glover's life, and they start to bond a little bit, and he comes to the dinner, and you get to start seeing the real character of Mel Gibson, the uh, pain that's there, the anguish, the um, determination to just do whatever he's got to do, and if somehow he gets killed in the line of work, that's fine for him. And he wakes up every day with an excuse to not kill himself, and it's just insane because you know several years or a year after this movie or two a friend of mine killed himself in front of me uh put a gun to his eye and pulled the trigger like a foot away from me foot and a half away from me it's just a crazy time in life and when i look back on this movie i don't get that feeling like uh um stressing me out it's just really deep in a movie that goes back this far and how they're setting up this uh, uh, chemistry between them. And then you, the bonds start forming. You, they investigate the friend, and it's some military uh, stuff, because Riggs, uh, um, I keep saying the fucking names, Mel Gibson's character finds like a mercenary switch for a detonator. They talk to the friend, and he has ties to some shadow company, and then it kicks into high gear. What a fucking movie as. They start trying to figure things out. They try to kill Mel Gibson's character. He has a bulletproof vest on. They fake his death. Just riveting. Um, enough of a comedy balance of like off kilter humor, which I guess Shane Black can do once in a while, but not for fucking Predator. They kidnap Danny Glover's daughter because they know he's involved and he was talking to his friend before they killed him. And. This is when Murtaugh has to, Danny Glover talks to Mel Gibson's character and says, are you for real? And he's like, yeah, um, you know, we can do this, but we have to do it my way. And since they think he's dead, Murtaugh goes to the agreement to give whatever, get his daughter back, and Mel Gibson's sniping. Another great scene, and breakthroughs in my opinion, I mean, yeah, people can go back and compare things, but I'm just talking about my perspective on things. You know, I don't even know when the movie was, where it was in this process, I was so absorbed into it, thinking that this is the end of the movie, or, you know, Mel Gibson gets him out, they're going to get the daughter, and it goes, it gets fucked up. <laughs> they almost get away, but they're all captured, even Mel Gibson is captured, and they're like, oh, you're alive. They bring him to this, uh, this fucking banded place, I guess, and they start torturing Mel Gibson's character. Another fucking great scene. And this is filtered through very subtle humor, very deep talks, um, you know, a tone and some depth into uh, the pain and anguish of a police officer, let alone one that sees the everyday stuff that they go through, but his wife has died, and he's just at his wit's end, and just a great progression, he's getting tortured mel gibson is just perfect just outstanding danny glover's characters also they're putting salt in his wound and he's telling him to go spit they got they bring the daughter in and all the family i think are in all the movies together and that really helps because it they all start to work together very well and like i said the first movie you're not going to get it too much and the family is there and it's more to like show Mel Gibson's character's uh, outsider coming in, and as the movies progress, they, they 
develop it more. Mel Gibson winds up getting loose and fucking kills this goes nuts. Saves Murtog and the daughter. And they realize that after they kill the leader, I think it's Tom Atkins, he's getting away in the car, Mel Gibson chasing him his classic scene with his fucking rifle and barefoot. And I think the car flips over and the grenades get caught in the fire and he blows up. But they realize that Gary Busey's character got loose, got away, and they know where he lives. And again, you know, the pacing of this movie, I didn't expect this ending to, to be what it was. So they they beat the leader, but they got this mercenary, uh, what would he call them? Big Bird or Blondie or something. Gary Busey, great role, great, probably his finest performance, in my opinion. They show up, because he's in the house, and they put a little, they got there first type thing, and he says, come out to surrender, and Mel Gibson just wants a piece of him. And it is amazing. At the time, you know, you used to fight, so I can go back and think of the Roger Moore, um, Karate Chop, uh, you know, villains, and it escalated. This movie was like one of the first movies that really showed like a real fight. Like you would see almost a a UFC fight, how UFC changed martial art fighting and the competition, where you see, although I love the old Kung Fu movies in Shaolin, you you know now what really works in a ring now. Okay, granted, outside is a different story. This is a fight that is epic. It makes history. In Hollywood, in my opinion, in these movies, gritty, real, you're on your edge of your seat, you're feeling it, the way they filmed it, the way it starts to um, build up to a win or loss is just amazing. Just amazing. In the end, they pull it through, and the bond is forever formed. What can you say? Lethal Weapon from 1987, one of the best movies of its genre. Arguably the best buddy cop movie. I do have a real passion for 48 Hours and um, some other ones. But when you go back, in, from my perspective, 16 years old, never heard of it. Like I just think about the today and a movie's coming out and it's got three trailers, 18 sites are reviewing it, giving it, uh, you know, you're looking at theories of what this is in the trailer. Back then there was nothing. Yes, you would see that awesome narrator on some of the commercials doing um, trailers from time to time, but I'm 16. I'm not really home sitting watching those things, and I guess I had caught them time to time. But you're not in, you know, it's not everywhere inundated with it. It's just uh, an awesome surprise. Never stop talking highly about Lethal Weapon, even if it's tail end of its franchise didn't um, go out with the biggest bang. I think it's really competent and done and I think Die Hard is a bigger drop off, although you could still have fun with it. The TV show is another story that I'll probably get to eventually. I think it's been cancelled after three seasons, but it's all started here with the first lethal weapon, Richard Donner. And looking back, I think I'd like to say I was a fan of Mad Max, so I probably knew Mel Gibson to some extent. Danny Glover, I would say I didn't. Gary Busey, possibly. And it's just a whirlwind of, you know, my childhood and my uh, teenage years and growing up and uh, years before that was, you know, I don't remember that being so drawn into a, a cop buddy type thing since, like, Starsky and Hutch being a, being a real little child. I will heap praise on Lethal Weapon to the Cows Come Home. Amazing movie. Acted well, directed well. I think it had a nomination for sound. I mentioned this in one of my other podcasts. Like They dubbed the bullet like eight times the way the Beretta sounds. Just And then, you know, a year later we get, or a year or two later, you get Die Hard, which up there for that loner type uh, predicament type 
movie where, you know, situations that you're getting into are just ridiculous and you just, you're with this guy and you're rooting for him. This had such a nuance to it. It was buddy cop movie, but it starts off with a dark tone, a realization that you're getting older as uh, Danny Glover has to, you know, he's going to retire soon. This new partner who, besides, like I said before, being in the shit of all the police work you can imagine in any division he was in to losing his wife and being suicidal. I mean, so many little themes that work so well that are written properly and their payoffs are there. It just works so well. Watch Lethal Weapon if you haven't seen it. It's worth it. I would say the franchise in general is excellent. The first two were amazing, great. And the other two are pretty good. There's just so much good to say. And maybe if I ever get to in-depth stuff and going through certain things and why it works so well, give it a shot. It's just uh, one of my favorites. Be well, everybody. Hope everybody's doing okay. My best to you and yours and everybody who impacts your life. I hope you're doing well. Until next time, take care.